My name is Eric Cross, and I'm Director of Forest Marketing at Vistara. Welcome to today's webinar on cloud management with Vistara. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first, today's agenda. I'm going to give you a brief, brief overview of Vistara for any of you who aren't familiar with uh, Vistara's unified IT operations management solution already. So that'll just be a couple of minutes. Um, then we'll go jump right into challenges in cloud management and talk about the hybrid cloud, hybrid IT, and hybrid service management. We'll talk about some customer use cases, and then I'll do a demo of Vistara. All right, so a brief, brief overview of Vistara. So Vistara, the company, um, uh, makes a solution for unified IT operations management. It's a comprehensive SaaS solution uh, that enables both enterprises and IT uh, service providers to drive unified IT operations. So Vistara currently has over 1,000 enterprise customers and over 100 service providers using our solution. It's a fully multi-tenant, multi-tier SaaS solution, and you can get up and running with it very quickly. One of the things that's unique about Vistara is that all of our functionality works equally well on-premise, in the private cloud, and in the public cloud. So one of Vistara's differentiators is that we can bring the kind of enterprise class security and management features to public cloud-based applications that we've historically associated with on-premise or private cloud deployments. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. We've got integrations for monitoring and management with hardware and software, physical and virtual uh, products from um, a broad array of vendors, some of whom uh, you see highlighted on the screen, as well as a strong distribution network. OK, so briefly, uh, the Star's solution brings together all the functionality you need to do um, unified IT operations management for the modern IT operational model. So we handle all of the assets you have, the physical ones and the virtual ones. We handle them on-premise, in the private cloud, in the public cloud. We can unify your assets into a hybrid cloud, and we can enable you to de uh, develop and define and manage hybrid services that span components coming from on-premise to private cloud and uh, one or more public clouds, as well as third-party cloud service vendors. So Vistara gives you a broad array of capabilities to address monitoring and management of all of these elements, regardless of where they are. So we give you asset management over the life cycle, so you can track physical and virtual assets from onboarding through use through end of life, unified alert management across all of your elements, regardless of their location, and um, all of your physical and virtual elements. Um, monitoring of everything you have. We've got built hundreds of built-in monitoring templates for hardware, software, applications, operating systems, um, everything you have in the IT environment, so that simply by um, deploying the star into your environment and putting elements under management, you can start implementing IT best practices. So we manage both public clouds and private clouds. We've got strong relationships with vendors like NetApp and EMC, um, who have been leading the charge in developing the private cloud. Um, and we support multiple public clouds, including Amazon and Rackspace with Google Cloud and Azure Cloud support coming soon. We allow you to manage all of your applications, uh, whether they be open source ones like Apache or leading enterprise applications like uh, Active Directory or IIS or SQL Server. We give you secure remote administration of all of your assets. So we give you console access to everything you have, and you don't need to have a VPN, any VPN solution at all. We give you built-in console access, secure console access to all of your assets regardless of location. Vistara supports runbook automation so that you can automate common operations and reduce, uh, prevent alerts from happening in the first place or automate the response to them when they occur. We give you network configuration management for your network devices, including full um, archive and rollback capability, and uh, patch management for your Windows and Linux OSs. We also have antivirus integrations with 10 leading antivirus solution vendors, so we can keep your antivirus 
signatures up to date uh, throughout the enterprise. And we give you integrated incident and problem management across all of this, so when something does go wrong, you can use a single application to track it across all of the physical and virtual assets that already have them. Okay, but enough about the startup. Let's talk about challenges in cloud management. So moving to the cloud creates a new set of challenges, some of which are familiar from legacy on-premise and private cloud applications, and some of which are new. So let's talk about each one of these in turn. The first one is simply cloud element and application management. You've got the same set of element and application management challenges you had in the on-premise and the private cloud world, but now it's taking place on one or more public clouds, and enterprises particularly, as they move their applications to the public cloud, need to be able to provide the same degree of control and management and security that we've historically associated with on-premise applications, but to do it on one or more public clouds. So you need to be able to monitor availability and performance and health for all of your cloud-based instances, as well as for the um, OSs you install in the instances and the applications you're running on top of them. You also need to be able to keep your cloud-based operating system images up to date, as well as the application images you're running up to date. Cloud services give you an instance, but what happens after that is pretty much up to you, particularly with the OS management and the patch management and the application management. Then you need to manage all of these virtual assets over their life, life cycle. Uh, you need to keep track of how many instances do I have and where are they? Uh, what um, operating systems have I deployed into them and have I made sure to uh, provision enough licenses that I'm in compliance? And then there's the end of license challenge, making certain that once you're no longer using an asset, it doesn't turn into a zombie um, asset that uh, costs you money that isn't providing value. So you need to pay attention to capacity utilization and uh, the elimination of instances that have become obsolete. Then there's uh, the security challenge. So you need to be able to provide the same kind of secure management access to your IT administrators on the public cloud that they've had on premise. And you need to do that to instances that could be spread across multiple uh, public clouds, multiple zones, Amazon, Rackspace, and others. And it would be really nice to be able to do that without the uh, expense and extra step provided by a uh, proprietary virtual private network. And then there's service management. So uh, you don't um, spin up cloud instances for their own sakes. You're doing it to solve some kind of a problem and offer a service or application. So, Typically, enterprises are offering new services on the cloud and want the benefits of the cloud for massive scalability and rapid uh, responsiveness in the face of spikes of demand. And um, you'll need to monitor and manage those services, just as you've monitored ones that are um, on-premise. And this is true both for a cloud services that are strictly cloud services, resident only in cloud, as well as hybrid services that may span the private cloud and the public cloud. So there's a need for cloud-ready service monitoring and management capabilities. Okay, so what capabilities does the Star give you to address these requirements? So first, let's talk about cloud element management. So the Star can monitor and manage all of your elements in the cloud. In particular, for your cloud instances, we can monitor CPU utilization, memory utilization, um, network I.O. You can start and stop and suspend cloud instances. And we give you secure, audible, auditable remote access to everything you have on the cloud uh, with no need for a uh, dedicated a, a VPN infrastructure. This R has its own console integration built in. So you can use multiple uh, popular uh, consoles to securely access your um, operating systems and your applications, your, your, regardless of where they're located, on the public cloud, the private cloud, or um, on-premise. And very importantly, all of these administrator access sessions are automatically recorded so that they can be later played back for auditing compliance. This is actually a lot of our customers' very favorite feature because it blows away auditors when they see it. This is done automatically, and it's useful for more than just audit compliance. You can also actually use it to train your staff 
um, as one of our uh, customers, uh, network engineers, commented, he says, you know, if something goes wrong and I need to jump in and do something late at night, I don't need to explain the next day what I did. I just point my teammate to the session recording from last night. They watched what I did, and now they know what happened, how I fixed it, and how they can uh, do it themselves next time. So this session recording capability is also useful for training your staff. Okay, so the story gives you patch management for your OS images. Uh, security is every bit as important on the cloud or more so um, than within the enterprise firewall, and so we can keep your Linux and Windows OSs up to date with our built-in patch management support. We'll also, when you bring your instances under Vistara management, we'll automatically scan every OS instance you've got and give you a report that tells you uh, whether the, their patches are up to date. We'll give you a list of recommended patches to bring them up to date. I already mentioned our support for antivirus updates, so you can make sure that your signatures are up to date and your systems are fully protected. And then also runbook automation. So we can give you runbook automation capabilities um, useful in the cloud as um, on-premise. Automate standard operations uh, to prevent common problems and to turn you from a uh, 911 um, fire department response into a building uh, inspector. They take a proactive approach to IT operations management instead of a reactive one. Okay, what about application management? So. Uh, enterprises are increasingly deploying standard applications into the cloud, and um, you need to manage those. So, uh, Vistara has built-in application management templates, just like our hardware uh, management templates. So, for many, many uh, popular applications, both open source stack ones as well as uh, leading enterprise um, applications, we give you uh, monitoring templates for Apache, MySQL, Couchbase, Redis, ActiveMQ, Memcache, IS, SQL Server, Active Directory, Exchange, and more. Um, so if you're using uh, a popular application, we've probably got a management template for it already. And if you're using something we don't have a built-in template for, you can actually create your own, or we can create one for you. This are as, uh, has built as standard templates that are easy for you to extend and customize. Um, and um, both Vistara and our customers routinely create new templates as needed. Okay, so um, so Vistara handles the process of updating your applications as well, because not only can we do patch management for your OS images, we can also do application updates for your application images. So all this helps make certain that your cloud-based um, infrastructure is every bit as secure as your on-premise one. Okay, so just a brief um, uh, screenshot of some of our monitoring capabilities. So um, uh, this is just a screenshot of monitoring um, a couch base. Um, uh, so you can see we're monitoring the number of operations per second. And also here uh, we're monitoring the number of memory utilization for an active MQ instance. And I'll actually show you the uh, monitoring for applications in the demo in a few minutes. Okay, so what about asset management over the life cycle? So after you spin up these virtual assets, you need to keep track of them um, over their life cycle. Um, uh, the star has support for asset management over the life cycle, both for physical and virtual assets. On the physical side, we've even got some interesting capabilities in terms of integration with scanners when you're onboarding physical assets and going to third-party uh, vendor databases online to automatically get the warranty and contract information. We can also do asset management on the virtual side. So we can track all of your uh, VM instances over their life cycle. Um, and then we can help you with compliance. Uh, you'll be deploying OSs in your instances as well as applications. You need to track the number of licenses you're using and make certain that you remain in compliance. There's tremendous power in the cloud-based model where you can easily spin up new instances and deploy um, uh, applications and OSs into them, but it's easy to fall out of compliance without um, realizing it. Okay, so we can help you stay on the good side of your auditors. We can give you an inventory of all the assets you have spread across on-premise, the private cloud, and the public cloud. So that's really helpful in just keeping track of an increasingly dynamic and sprawling infrastructure. 
So all of this helps you to achieve the same degree of security in the cloud that you normally have on-premise. I've already talked about secure remote, remote access to cloud instance, so we give you secure remote console instance uh, for multiple uh, popular um, uh, console types, SSH, RDP, uh, VMC, Telnet. We record all those access sessions automatically. You can actually restrict access so that um, your assets can only be accessed through the uh, the Star Atlas solution. So some are more security and auditing conscious customers do that because they want to make certain that nobody's going around the app um, to avoid being reported. They want to be able to prove their auditors that everything um, they said was done in fact was done and making certain people were accessing through the star is an easy way to make sure that happens automatically. Those session recordings are kept for 30 days by default and if you want to keep them longer that's available as an optional service. And then the patch antivirus and application updates again help to keep all of your uh, instances fully secure. Okay, so now let's talk a bit more about the challenges that come with the hybrid cloud, with the hybrid IT operating model, and then with the management of hybrid services that are running across a mixed public and private cloud environment. Okay, so what is a hybrid cloud? So um, Thomas Pittman and David uh, Searley of uh, Gardner define the hybrid cloud as Hybrid cloud and cloud computing is the coordinated use of cloud services across isolation and provider boundaries between internal and external cloud services. So, put simply, you're using both private cloud and public cloud together um, to solve problems. And that can happen for a number of reasons. You may have some services running only on your hybrid cloud that need to be leveraged by other services that are running on the public cloud. You may want, if you've got a um, load pattern, which is generally fairly stable, but occasionally has spikes, you may want to normally run your load off of your private cloud in order to do it at the lowest possible cost, and then only dynamically provision extra instances on the public cloud for addressing sudden spikes in usage. So for whatever reason, um, you may want to um, run your services across a combination of private and public cloud instances. And the Star can help you do that. So some of the solution management capabilities that come up um, if you're uh, using a hybrid cloud approach. So you've got to be able to manage elements both on the private cloud and on the public cloud. There are a number of new solutions out there that will help you manage cloud-based infrastructure, but can't do anything for on-premise infrastructure. And there are lots of legacy applications that work well for your on-premise infrastructure, but really aren't well suited to the uh, world of cloud. The Star is unusual is in that it was written from the ground up to live in a cloud-based world and support both on-premise and cloud-based infrastructure. Um, so there's really no difference uh, for us in our mind. Same set of capabilities available in all cases. You've got to be able to map your virtual infrastructure to your physical infrastructure, um, particularly for the private cloud. You'll need to keep track of which storage solution you're using to support your VM instances. Um, you do a single monitoring and management interface that lets you see what's going on. So it's hard enough to debug problems if they are in a strictly on-premise deployment and everything is in your own um, uh, data center. But then once you're mixing elements across the private cloud and the public cloud, uh, it can really become a headache quickly if you don't have a unified view of everything that's going on. And this already gives you that. So one of the things we provide is unified alert management across the public and private cloud, which is just ideal if you've got a hybrid cloud implementation. Okay, so what's hybrid IT? So hybrid IT is the approach to IT that you get as a result of combining internal and external services usually from a combination of internal and public clouds in support of various business outcomes. So basically hybrid IT is simply what you can do using hybrid cloud. Okay, so IT's role is changing as a result of the migration to the cloud, uh, hybrid cloud uh, approach, and the hybrid IT model. So IT organizations are now becoming the brokers for a set of IT services that are hosted partially internally and partially externally, a hybrid IT infrastructure. So this changes IT's role um, from a technology integrator to a governance entity. 
the goal here, of course, is to offer internal customers the price, capacity, and speed of provisioning of the external cloud while maintaining security and governance the company requires and reducing IT service costs. So that's Chris Howard's take on IT's new role in the hybrid IT model. Okay, so what are IT's key responsibilities in the hybrid IT model? So first, you've got to be able to be a trusted evaluator and approver of services. And this is increasingly a challenge in a world where people can uh, go off and uh, provision their own cloud-based services using a credit card. You may not even realize um, they have them. The IT's got to be able to manage internal services. It's got to be able to govern all the services you're using. You've got to define SLAs and then monitor and manage, manage your compliance. You also have to be able to do identity management um, in the cloud and also have a, a data management policy. So the SARA can help you get your hybrid cloud under control. All right, so what are some of the capabilities that SARA brings to the table? One of them is hybrid service availability model uh, monitoring. I talked about how um, you can um, define a hybrid service that spans the private and public cloud. Well, that creates some interesting challenges in terms of monitoring your application's availability. Um, you've got to have a definition of application availability that really matches the hybrid model, where some of your elements are on the private cloud, some of the elements are on the public cloud, and a service availability is a function of the availability of all these elements and the service's ability to be resilient uh, in the face of the loss of some of them. So are you going to track the availability of individual elements or the entire service composed of multiple elements? And then are you going to consider availability of binary quality as being up or down, or something more fine-grained where you're tracking a notion of degraded ability? You also have to be able to differentiate between planned downtime and unplanned planned downtime. And you've got to be able to map your service to the elements that support it, and then um, easily browse from the service to its constituent elements to assist in troubleshooting. Okay, so our goal then is monitoring IT service that is composed of multiple components, some of which may be resident in the private cloud, and some of which may be resident in the public cloud, some of which may even be legacy on-premise um, components that predate the whole uh, world of virtualization in the cloud. So the server gives you the ability to define your own service. And uh, more powerfully, it gives you the ability to do dynamic rule-based service membership. So you don't have to uh, manually add each element to a service as you provision it. You can actually create rules that say, for example, all elements with a name of a certain form shall automatically be considered um, part of a given service. Uh, you can even do more powerful uh, rules, such as recognizing uh, new elements and then automatically applying scripts to them. Okay, so this already gives you uh, powerful capabilities for um, uh, defining hybrid services and the rules for determining which elements make them up. And that helps a lot when your staff can use a variety of different tools, including tools other than Vistara or uh, cloud vendors tools, to dynamically provision new instances and your service monitoring and management has to run after that and automatically keep up. So we also give you the ability to visualize your service with a dashboard um, and a topology, so it's easy for administrators to understand how it fits together. Okay, so briefly, how do we monitor an IT service? So um, you can group multiple elements together using rules and then define services based on the groups and the rules. And I'll show you some examples of that. So here's just a screenshot of what a service looks like in our interface. Here's the dashboard for a given service. You can see that uh, you've got metrics here for availability and performance that uh, take into account the availability or lack thereof of the constituent elements that make up each service. And then here's your topology map where you see the service and then the different elements that are supporting it. So it's really intuitive to navigate from a service to its constituent elements when you're trying to troubleshoot or figure out what's going on. So another capability that Star gives you is the fact that we support multiple uh, leading cloud providers. So we already support Amazon Web Services and Rackspace, and support for Azure and Google Cloud is coming 
soon. So that gives you a choice of cloud vendors, which helps to protect you from cloud vendor lock-in. We also are built for OpenStack. So um, the fact that we are integrating with OpenStack and that set of management capabilities makes it that much easier for you to migrate your um, applications from one cloud vendor to another and have the same set of management capabilities regardless of where you're hosting your instances. The other thing that this gives you is the ability to support multi-cloud deployments if you want uh, truly high availability applications. So um, some um, enterprises who have applications that absolutely cannot go down under any circumstances are feel that depending on any single cloud vendor, no matter how uh, reliable is an unacceptable um, single point of failure, they're actually replicating their services across multiple cloud vendors so that uh, if one cloud vendor has a catastrophic out outage, they can still uh, rely on the other to come through. Again, uh, Vistara is cloud agnostic. We give the same capabilities regardless of which uh, cloud service you're using. Okay, reporting. Vistara has a built-in set of reports that span on-premise, private cloud, and public cloud and um, make it easy for you to report to your stakeholders about um, your entire set of IT assets and their state at the end of the month. Uh, some of our customers have commented that Vistara lets them spend less time editing PowerPoint presentations and more time actually uh, building new services. And I'll show you um, one of those standard reports uh, in a few minutes. Okay, let's talk briefly about some uh, use cases for Vistara's capabilities in the cloud and one uh, customer case study, and then we'll jump into the demo. Okay, so one use case is lifecycle life management for Amazon Web Services or other cloud services. So Vistara gives you the ability to monitor um, everything that you're getting from Amazon Web Services and to uh, configure uh, what you have. That will give you asset management over the life cycle. So you can keep track of all your instances in a single interface. And the fact that we're continuously doing capacity utilization makes it easier to identify instances that are no longer being used uh, that have had uh, no CPU uh, utilization for a very long time, for example. So you can avoid wasting money on instances uh, you no longer need. Okay, then capacity analytics. So this also helps for capacity planning. You can, uh, we've got built-in uh, capacity utilization monitoring, and you can see the trends over time. So it's a lot easier just to uh, realize in advance that your capacity utilization is going up, so you need to provision more instances. Okay, another use case is integrating with DevOps processes. So uh, uh, DevOps engineers love this era actually because they let Development engineers and IT operations engineers work together in a single uh, tool that makes it easy to understand what happened when you pushed out the new uh, release to production. So um, we've got uh, integrated support from metric collection via SASB. Um, you can automatically inject the Vistara agent onto managed systems using Chef and Puppet recipes. Um, you can automatically add newly provisioned instances, as I mentioned, into groups, sites, or services via rules or via APIs. So the Vistara can automatically um, recognize what kind of new instance uh, you provision, where it is, what service it's on, and update all our views so that's automatically reflected in our management interface. So this makes it a lot easier to correlate technical changes on the software side with uh, behavioral changes on the IT operations side. This enables the development organization to be more responsive uh, if a problem occurs after a new release is pushed to production. Okay, so as I mentioned, one of the advantages of Vistara is that we will automatically recognize these new instances regardless of what you use to provision them. So you may provision them using the Amazon Web Services Console or Writetail or Scripts or Command Line. It doesn't matter where the instance came from. Vistara will automatically recognize the new instance and uh, start monitoring and, if you want, managing it. And even uh, automatically adding it into the service it's supporting 
assuming you define a rule that uh, lets you recognize the correlation of that, uh, the mapping of that service, of that instance to the service. So you can have custom applications written, for example, in Ruby um, that are being monitored and managed by uh, Vistara. And we can, uh, you can create your own application uh, monitoring um, using our monitoring templates for applications you build yourself. Okay, so uh, one customer example, Netscope, is using Vistara to do uh, unified IT operations management to enable their DevOps um, uh, operating model. So uh, Netscope, if you um, aren't familiar with them already, is a cloud analytics and policy management company. They help you to IT to recognize what cloud applications and services are actually being used in the enterprise, regardless of who provision them, and then um, identify which ones are safe to use, which ones are um, uh, may be less secure based on the, on the uh, analysis they've done of those applications and their vendors. And then to let you impose a policy that is not a binary of you can use the app or not, but actually can be much more granular. Anyway, Nesco is a uh, young, fast-moving startup. Uh, they're using the DevOps uh, development model. And they needed a IT operations management solution that was as flexible and uh, fast-paced as the uh, development they're doing. So they chose the startup. Um, the, the development engineers and the IT operations engineers collaborate together within the Vistara uh, tool to make sure that they can respond quickly every time they do a uh, push to production. So that gives them the best of both worlds. They get the agility of DevOps with the continuous monitoring and management that the startups provides, as well as the high security uh, that the startup gives them as their uh, engineers and operations professionals are accessing their instances around the globe. Okay. So let's proceed to the demonstration. Again, if you've got questions, please pose them to the Q&A area. So let's show you some of these management capabilities. So if you haven't seen it already, this is the Vistara top-level dashboard that you see when you log in. You can see that we've got some uh, graphs that make it easy to understand your IT environment at a glance. You can see alerts over time. If you see a sudden spike in alerts, that probably uh, merits your attention. Um, you've got metrics of availability, what's up, what's down, and uh, whose status is unknown. You've got your inventory by service group. So you can break down your IT, you can organize your IT elements into uh, services and also into business unit groups. You've got uh, tracking of your tickets because you've got incident, uh, integrated incident and problem management. Um, as well as your service progress organized by uh, priority. And this dashboard is customizable, by the way, um, so you can uh, tailor it to your individual needs. Okay, so one of the powerful features of uh, Vistara is our infrastructure browser, which you can see here on the left-hand side. So it organizes all the physical virtual assets you have, regardless of where they need may be, into a single browsable user interface. You can see here your desktop assets, your servers, both Windows and Linux. Uh, then going further down, you can see private cloud solutions like FlexPod and vSpecs. Um, you can see your uh, VMware instances, mobile devices, your networking devices. And then down here, you can see um, your cloud services. So you can see we've got, uh, we're using Rackspace and also Amazon. Um, all of this is organized into a single user interface and browsable um, easily through this infrastructure browser. So right now we're browsing by infrastructure. There are also other ways of browsing your physical and virtual assets up here in these tabs. Um, so they can be organized by group. So if you have business units, for example, um, that, um, have their own IT organizations, and each IT organization can be given a business unit specific view of the assets they should have access to. You can also browse your physical and virtual assets by physical or virtual site. Um, and then finally, you can actually browse them by service, and we'll get to that uh, more in a moment. Okay, so let's look at some of the um, 
um, instances we're running and uh, take a look at how you can monitor and manage them using the startup. So here we have a uh, Windows OS. Um, it's running Active Directory. And you can see that the star is aware of what you're running on a uh, given OS because it actually customizes the user interface to automatically add an application-specific tab. So here you can see a special tab for Active Directory. And on this tab, you can see health statistics that are specific to Active Directory. So you've got information about your password policy, your local security groups, users, um, uh, and so on. So in addition to all of the information about the physical device, if you have access to it, if it's a physical instance, uh, then we also give you information about the applications that are running on your OS. Okay, here's another um, instance that is running Exchange and uh, MS SQL and IS. So you can see here's common statistics about Exchange, mail sent per day, um, mail received per day, top mailbox, and so on. Uh, SQL Server, same thing. You can see information about your database storage, SQL Server instances, data files utilization, free space, and so on. And likewise for IS. Okay, so um, we do the same for Linux. Let's take a look at a Linux server. One moment. Okay, so here is a Linux server um, that we're uh, running, and you can see. Um, on that Linux server, the list of applications it's running and all of the uh, uh, patches, whether they are up to date or not. Uh, the, patch, the automatic scanning for being up to date or not on patches is really a time saving feature of the star. And, you know, as we all know, it's a lot easier to be secure if you make it easy to be secure. And that's what we try to do with the star. Okay, so here is a Linux server. You can see a list of the applications that are running on it. Um, you can see it's a um, Linux server running a lot of the applications you would typically expect. And then we can go over and take a look at the patches. We'll catch up on applying patches and we can put it under patch management so that it will patch patches will apply to automatically going forward. Okay, so I talked about the ability to define a, a custom service and uh, define which elements it depends on, and here's an example of that. So here's the custom service I created. You can see that it depends on a variety of different assets, a data store, a Linux server, a mailbox server, a mail front end, mail hub transport, and uh, some app servers. And this is the topology map that we give you. So it's really easy for your uh, IT administrators to browse from the service to its constituent elements and then drill down to see what's going on with each one of them. We also give you um, this overview tab that gives you metrics of availability. You can see that we've got metrics for availability that include fully up, fully down, and also degraded service. Okay, so you can make your own definitions as simple or as sophisticated as you want to. Okay, I talked about the STARS um, custom reports, and let's take a look at one of them. So the executive summary report is automatically generated on a monthly basis, and it gives you a summary of um, key statistics about your distributed IT assets that uh, are of, typically of interest to your executive stakeholders. So you can see a summary of all the services you offer, your inventory, uh, metrics on infrastructure availability and health, alert incident management, patch management, antivirus management. Okay, so here you can just see some of the summary statistics. You can see a measurement of your availability, um, the number of alerts you have been um, uh, processing, patch management, uh, antivirus update compliance, and so on. You can see the physical devices you're managing and uh, your, your uh, operating systems broken down. You can see the availability statistics. You can see your infrastructure health. You can see statistics on network performance, alert, instant management, and more. So um, the SARA pulls all this information together and lets the SARA serve as a single source of truth for your IT organization. So instead of trying to reconcile different data you're getting from different applications, you can bring all that information to the SARA and then rely on it to reconcile the information for you. So what's the state of cloud adoption? 
Yeah, so, you know, people have been talking about the cloud for years, uh, but it's pretty clear that the impact of um, the availability of virtualization technology and the cloud is still really only beginning. Um, you know, you see some cutting edge enterprises like Amazon um, who have moved their entire infrastructure uh, for public facing services to the cloud. Um, and, you know, they're really showing the way forward for high availability, high scalability, uh, complex services. Um, but, uh, you know, they're, they're definitely at one end of the spectrum in terms of adoption. Enterprises are still um, uh, moving their applications to the private cloud and starting to experiment with the public cloud. And uh, hybrid cloud is more cutting edge. So, really, anyone who's thinking about these issues now is well positioned to um, be on the cutting edge uh, in the next five years as more and more enterprises take the plunge with public cloud services and also more sophisticated hybrid cloud infrastructures. Uh, also, um, definitely we're seeing that uh, startups have moved to the cloud in droves for all the obvious reasons, minimizing their um, startup costs and uh, maximizing infrastructure availability. Uh, so younger um, companies are uh, further along in uh, cloud development. Um, uh, but we're, you know, with the increasing acceptability of uh, major cloud uh, services and um, their increasing cost effectiveness, uh, even the largest enterprises are uh, now looking at what they can do to migrate more of their uh, load to the cloud over time. So thank you very much for taking the time to attend our webinar. You can learn more at our website, thisrit.com. If you've got more questions, we'd love to set up an individual demo um, at your convenience so you can see a one-on-one uh, -on -one demo of our capabilities and how they may help your organization. Just send an email to sales at thisrit.com if you have any questions. Thank you again for your time, and thank you for using the startup.